this is going to be a longer video. Whatever you want to know about Jalen Darden, I probably watched eight or nine games a couple times over. Um, so I have a pretty, I, I have a pretty good grasp on who he is. I think with a lot of these receivers, people either don't put in the time, uh, or they don't really know how to evaluate levels of competition. They kind of just watch the result of the play. If the result of the play is good, player's good. If the result of the play is bad, player's bad. But they're not able to kind of like finally look at like what the goal, what the, what the big picture of the play is, uh, which you have to do if you're going to be looking at a bunch of players from different schools. And so with Darden, I'm going to try to give you guys context and as many details. I promise you, uh, most people will not be doing that with this prospect. Uh, in terms of his build, he's 5'9", 174 four pounds as his listed size recruiting profiles listed him at 5'9, 160 coming out of high school i saw him listed at 165 his sophomore year in the north texas program he's small he doesn't have a tiny build like a 2-2 atwell of louisville as y'all can see here he's got good muscle definitions in his arms and calves thighs and ass aren't huge but overall a good looking athlete it can be hard to judge a player's body just off the tv copy unless you have inside info on how responsive a player's body can be to training regimens uh, it's it's hard to tell how much heavier Darden could play at, but from my experience, his battle is going to be keeping the weight up. So his raw production was off the charts. Uh, Darden was a consensus All-American in 2020, MVP of Conference USA. He put up crazy stats over the last two years, 150 plus catches, over 1,900 yards, and 31 touchdowns. Per game, he's averaging close to 100 yards and about a touchdown and a half per game over his last 21 games. He's a player where I had to look at contacts and situation a lot. Because with Darden, you have to filter out a lot of his production and contextualize it more, more than most receivers. He's in very advantageous situations, and this starts with the offense he played in. Um, so he played in a version of the spread offense, which utilizes some unique alignments. A lot of it is based on the college hashes. And with the spread offense, you conceptually are attacking various areas of the field. You're running with favorable box counts. And so sometimes you'll just get in a weird formation like this where you get an even box count, defense is playing too high, have to get four over four, and that's where a lot of their run game comes in. As you can see, players are completely spread out, and so Darden's really not going to get any targets on a lot of these plays. And I want you guys to see the structure of these running plays because offensive philosophy is huge for the context around Darden because North Texas film is filled with running the ball until you respect it with numbers. Once you're respecting it, then they're taking shots to Darden down the field and then the intermediate when he's singled up or has a lot of space to work with. And because they'll only take shots to Darden when a defensive shell favors throwing the ball, and the fact that he isn't really on the field for a lot of heavy personnel sets, Darden's stats like yards per route run, yards per target, are through the roof. So he gets a lot of usage in favorable situations, and they don't really force feed him the ball like some other receivers do. Jalen Darden is very fast, probably a high 4-3, low 4-4 guy. But his accelerator and his feet are the best parts of his speed profile. We're talking instant acceleration. He's able to tap into that right away, which is really what you want. It's more practical, and you can make more use of that trait in more situations. And you'll notice in the next few reps that he's just well past the athletic threshold uh, of his competition in college. On this nine ball, outside release the line, no contest by the DB. He's even with his defender at the 23 and has two to three yards of clear separation even before he's in the end zone. There's no deception to this play. Realistically, there are limited routes that uh, this could be once it's an outside release, and he pretty much knows where he has to get to and just physically can't. Same thing with this crossing route from the slot on the next play. You can tell the safety recognizes the break, hesitates a little, uh, and Darden does have more possible route availability from the slot based on what they would run. Uh, so he's a little hesitant about driving early on this route, and he's just done. No underneath help. He can't even catch up for a tackle attempt. And this is pretty much what a 4 8 four, nine, uh, low D1 safety looks like singled up on an NFL caliber athlete in space. Um, luckily, there is some tape of Darden against NFL safeties. Two, actually, in the 2019 Cal game when he played on the same field as Jalen Hawkins and Ashton Davis. The problem is there's just not enough of it. Darden was off the field for probably 20 offensive snaps or so. Uh, North Texas ran more of a run-heavy game script, and he would just spend drives on the sidelines or parts of drives, and you'll see this sometimes in his tape. Uh, Hawkins, a fourth-rounder in last year's draft, actually tries to undercut this bubble. 
uh, but the corner's not able to maintain outside leverage and force it back inside. And so Darden's acceleration's on full display here. If you're going to take that type of pursuit angle against him, he's going to really make you pay. And we're getting into the best part of Darden's game, YAC, yards after the catch juice that he's got. And this is probably my favorite play from him uh, that I've watched. And you're going to see it a lot better on the next angle. But it's really just showing like his peak ability uh, with the ball in his hands. This is not a choreographed play. Uh, this type of reactionary footwork is just special, man. We're seeing it all in one play, reacting to stimuli. The way he uses peripheral vision gets himself out of off-balance situations. Uh, this little hop step, little crossover right here, and then the immediate... I'm so impressed that he stayed on balance right there. This plays what intuition looks like on the football field. And he's not intuitive everywhere, but in this... This area he is. Like, I can't really teach you how to navigate multiple defenders with different pursuit angles at high speeds in these situations. I mean, that's that's just talent. It's part vision, but really just peripheral vision to see the second closing defender. But I think he sees him so late, so it's really more about ability. Um, but his footwork, where his feet go and when he makes moves is very natural. It's a big reason why he's great after the catch. His feet are some of the best in the class uh, in this area in terms of footwork, intuition, uh, his pacing even. It's why he looks so elusive. And so this is important if you're trying to find a role for him because he's not that big. He's got issues with physicality. He's fast, but it's good speed. It's not elite burner speed. Uh, so gadget touches, screen usage, yards after the catch on downfield concepts. This is where he's got an edge. And back to his pacing. He follows his blockers really well. He has a good sense of where to bend his run path, when to hesitate. He's very elusive, but he's not powerful, so I can't completely see him as just an after-the-catch player if that's really just his one trick. So if you're not fully a yak guy like a Debo Samuel, Ayuk type, who have the juice but have more immediate tackle-breaking ability and size, I'm going to need you to give me two advantages. And this is where his deceleration matters more even than ex his acceleration. He has the physical ability to run certain stop routes, comebacks, uh, threaten deep and break off a defender. And he's going to have to develop into that because otherwise I have a smaller receiver with one really high level trait and a low floor, which we'll get to in a second. Because if you can do that, uh, win on decelerations during a break, you got all the other stuff, yak, uh, threaten deep enough, you get a Darnell Mooney where a fifth round pick can be a really productive player in year one. You still protect him with alignment uh, some, but he can do more stuff on the outside as an X or Z. Um, he's got double moves and then 400 drag routes that go for six yards because our offensive design and personnel is pretty buns. Um yeah, I think Nagy just kind of threw in the towel this year because he did a good job idiot-proofing the offense in 2018 for MVP Mitch. Never forget. And Mooney and Darden are actually pretty different, but in terms of just small school guys, potential usage, where they went in the draft, like, Mooney is probably Darden's ceiling. Um, I doubt that he reaches it because of the rest of his tape. There's a lot wrong with it especially when you look at it through the lens of projecting him into a role. Like, this is where people can go wrong because there's not a position where it's like, yeah, we'll just have him play the position where we throw him uh, 12 tunnel screens a game and have him uh, make the right decisions on the outside. Not that he can't develop because he has the talent, he has the physical talent at least, to be a high-level player in a role in the NFL, in my opinion. But um, in terms of my verdict, what I see, uh, is he worth the top 100 pick? Mid-round three, no chance. Um, and I'm not taking him in the first five rounds either. And it's not because I think he sucks. He just doesn't give me enough outside his, like, one and a half or two traits to kind of, like, hold him over to where, like, it, it's it's worth it. And Um, if you watch the other parts of his game, uh, his releases, how he deals with physicality during the route, 
uh, really needs improvement. He's not a catch point receiver. And you're going to see an end zone play by an SMU DB on one of these plays. Uh, very good play by the DB. But uh, Darden's giving up positioning way too easily. Um, and that really matters because he tracks well enough uh, to where he could win it out on the field if he was either faster or better at the catch point. But I just don't think there's enough long speed in his game to overcome that. Like, he's not Ruggs or Hamler. He's more Isaiah McKenzie. Uh, so he's going to need a wider margin for error separating on the field. And if he can't win at the catch point, that's not... That's not great. Um, and he's also 5'9", so he doesn't have this like massive uh, catch radius if we're actually talking about those types of routes. He is very contact-averse. Does not like contact. I see a player who, if you punch him, he doesn't really punch back. Uh, he significantly will round his routes around sitting defenders, which effectively is the same as if you got pressed in those situations. He doesn't deal with press well. Um, a lot of players will do that, the, the routing of the routes uh, around sitting defenders. But in his case, uh, I, I think it's more on the, the higher end of that, uh, of that spectrum. Uh, and I found that over the middle contact can disrupt him during the route, uh, during the catch point. Um, and the, the big thing I want to say is he loses focus. That, that's like the underlying thing where... Um, if you ask me, like, does this player have a high chance of reaching his ceiling of being a productive player? I would say no. Because watching the plays where he would lose focus was a huge red flag for me. Because players can get upset, you know, if they completely, like, burn a guy. It, the, players can get upset if they feel like they their teammates are letting them down. That's very... That's expected. But in his case, I don't think he... I'm not really sure what... He is as upset about on certain plays. You can see it in his body languages, plays here and there. And if I'm drafting you for a role, I really need you to be focused. I can't just have you um, losing your cool every so often. Yeah, the contact diverse thing, you see it on this rep versus uh, the North Texas one. So when you watch him in the slot on this play uh, against uh, man coverage, there's three releases that you're usually going to see. You're going to see releases due to physicality. You're going to see them due to like elusiveness or hand usage. And he's really not picking any of these. He's more of like the hope with him is that he can develop like an elusive uh, release profile. But he's really just standard inside or outside release. Nothing really to it. There's not a ton of deception. And he, as you can see, once hands are on him, he's kind of done. Another thing. Big red flag. He was slowly weaned off of special teams. Again, I don't know the reason for it, but with this caliber of athlete at his level of competition, when his best trait is literally, it's very correlative to punt returning. And I've seen him return a few punts and he looks fine. Um, and he spent snaps on the sideline. The fact that he was uh, slowly taken off them was surprising to me. And so here you're going to see, this is kind of where the human elements comes into as well, because we go back to the spread offense, and with the spread offense, you have the, the players at least have some idea where the ball is going based on the defensive shell. And so players don't play with blinders on. And this is something I'm trying to consider. They're watching, you know, they're watching the game too, and they there is a human element of if I, if the ball's not coming to me, like I know the ball's not coming to me, there can be some reluctance to kind of go along with the play, especially if you are well above your level of competition, which Darden was. He seems to be a player that I think is a really good example of how stats can lie a little bit, how an offensive philosophy can influence efficiency, and how even players with really good traits can need a lot of work and... If I can't project you to a role, it's going to be a lot harder, especially if you're not giving me special teams value. So that's pretty much everything on Darden that I could find. And he's not so much overrated. He, he's overrated by some. Like if you're, if you're expecting this guy to be a top 100, top 125 player where he's a contributor on your roster, I don't think this is the profile you want to bet on because I think he is more one-dimensional. And he's going to be more talented than players in the fourth, fifth, sixth round. Um... But, you know, I need you to have staying power on my roster. And if you can't do that, there is some risk involved with your pick. Yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. We will 
be doing Christian Derrissaw next. So we're going to do a couple tackles. Um, I want to do some O-line stuff. And, yeah, thank you guys.